Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. okay. Um, so I see four. Oh, oh, there you are. Okay. So it's good to see everyone. Um, we have. Um, I do have announcements, but I'm going to. But I'm going to hold off until we start the development review items. So I'm um, so I'm so pleased um, that um, to start today's uh, March 4th um, planning board meeting. And we're going to start off with the draft minutes of February 11th. Is there a motion? Move approval. Move approval. I'll second to Vice Chair Bailey. Okay, so and we have the full complement of planning board members here, all five. We have a motion from um, Vice Chair Bailey and a seconded by Commissioner Washington. Um, Vice Chair Bailey? But I. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. And Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so um, the next item, we have a parks and recreation item on, which is item 3C. We have a, a land disposal item. And so, and then after that, we will go into closed session. Mr. Tyler and Mr. McNeil, let's see if the parks and rec folks who are on. Okay, Mr. Tyler, I see you. Um, good morning, our Director of Parks and Recreation. Yes, I don't see are you, I don't see any other Parks and Rec folks on today. Are you presenting? Uh, no, I am not presenting. Um, this would be um, a member from our Parks and Planning Department, and they okay. should be on now. Okay, so can we, can we, um, Mr. Flanagan, can you roll that and check? Is it is it Mr. Um, McNeil or or Ms. Desney or Ms. Ewing or Mr. Sun? I believe it is. Mr. Unmute uh, everyone. I believe it's Mr. Sun. Okay, scroll down. Okay, okay, Mr. Sun, are you ready? I see that you're logged in. Mr. Sun. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, we'll go. We'll, we'll skip this one while he while they figure that out, Mr. Uh, Tyler, and we'll go to closed session. Okay, and that'll give you an opportunity. Um, All right. So thank you. Okay, pursuant to Section 3-305B3 of the General Provisions Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland, we need a motion to go into closed session for purposes of discussing the acquisition of real property. Is there a motion? Yeah. Second. Okay, it's motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by Commissioner Bailey, and that too, I think, is Mr. Sun, but Commissioner Washington, uh, Commissioner Washington? Aye. Vice Chair Bailey? Good aye. Um, Commissioner uh, Geraldo? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. The ayes have it 5 0. So we're going to go into closed session, which is a separate link, and we'll return. And, and um, our folks are taking care of that link for you. Okay, so I will go back then. Thank you for taking care of that link. Okay. So move, move, Madam Chair. Is there a second? second? Okay, we have a motion from um, from Vice Chair, I mean, Commissioner Washington and seconded by Vice Chair Bailey to come out of closed session. Vice Chair Bailey? Good aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye. Okay, I don't think Commissioner Dorner is back on yet. Okay, so. Um, and while I'm here, we had need a motion to approve the minutes of the executive session, the closed session meetings of, of December 3rd, 10th, and 17th of 2020. Is there a motion? Move, Move approval, approval, Madam Chair. I second to Vice Chair Bailey. Okay, so uh, we have a motion from Vice Chair Bailey, seconded by Commissioner Washington. Vice Chair Bailey? Good aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Um, Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Okay, the ayes have it four zero. Um, okay. Um, thank you. Um, so now we have I, 
Item 3C, which is um, a land disposal item. Mr. Sun? Yes, good morning, Madam Chairman, fellow planning board members. For the record, Paul Sun from the Department of Parks and Recreation. We are here today to present a land disposal with a request to convey commission property to the Prince George's County Department of Public Works, DP and WT. Next slide, please. There is a current DPWT Capital Improvement Program, CIP, to improve Brandywine Road. Brandywine Road is a two, two lane rural collector roadway that carries traffic from Piscataway Woodyard Road, Maryland 223, in a southern direction towards Branch Avenue. Next slide, please. As part of the roadway upgrades, DPWT is proposing a new bridge over Piscataway Creek, which joins property owned by the Commission. Next slide, please. This new bridge will be much more structurally sound and approximately two and a half feet higher than the existing bridge. DP and WT engineers have noted this new height will accommodate the 25 year flood, flood underneath the bridge. This is a much needed project, not only for the new road and travelways, but also include new stream and slope st stabilization measures Installation of guardrails along with the new storm drain inlets and ditch realignment. Next slide, please. Additionally, with the proposed railway design, there's provision for a five foot sidewalk and 15 foot wide bike lane shoulder along both sides of Brandy Line Road. Next slide. In order to accomplish the design and alignment of the new bridge, DP and WT has requested a conveyance of 1.9 acres of Piscataway Creek Stream Valley Park to Prince George's County. DPR staff finds that this is a worthy benefit, public benefit project, especially with the proposed sidewalk and bike lanes on both sides of Brain Iron Road, which will help connectivity through the community. Next slide. In 2001, a land bank agreement was established in Prince George's County to facilitate the conveyance. Uh oh, Mr. Sun. I'm sorry. There was a land. Next slide. Uh, one more slide, please. In 2001, there was a land bank created to convey small parcels of land to DP and WT exchange for commission property. The current available balance of the land bank is 24.1 acres. Conveyance of the 1.9 acres needed for this project will leave a balance of 22.41 acres. DP, DPR staff recommends approval of this disposal and conveyance of needed land subject to the final approval of the full commission. Next slide. Are there any questions? This concludes staff's presentation. Okay, thank you. I was trying to see if there's any um, any questions. Um, okay, so if there are no questions, is there a motion? Move approval, Madam Chair. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by Vice Chair Bailey. Um, Commission, uh, Vice Chair Bailey? Vote aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Okay, the ayes have it. Thank you so very much and um, kudos on your Parks and Rec Day, okay? Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Um, and board. Thank you very much. So, um, I'm going to go with my announcements now because we're starting the development review items. And I wanted to say um, good morning, everyone. I'm Chair Hewlett of the Prince George's County Planning Board. The Planning Board uh, is in session for Thursday, March 4th, 2021 for its development review items. And this is the Planning Board's 39th meeting since March 26th of 2020. We remain committed to promoting a safe and healthy environment for our public, our applicants, our stakeholders and staff as we continue business operations to propel Prince George's County forward. I'd like to take a moment to remind everyone of our participation guidelines. Speaker pre-registration and pre-submission of comments and exhibits, if any, is required. All participants must pre-register and all materials or exhibits, if any, 
must be submitted by 12 noon on the Tuesday before the planning board meeting as shown on the screen now, as announced in weekly meetings, as posted on our website, and as clearly stated in bold red on our published weekly planning board agenda. Registered speakers and presenters will join the meeting with the link provided via email from the planning board office or may listen or participate using a phone line utilizing the call-in number provided via email. To eliminate audio feedback, only one connected device with sound should be in the room at the same time. And of course, the public may continue to watch planning board meetings streamed live, or if you wish to become a person of record, you, as you can see the link on the screen, or you may sign up on our online web form. So again, please see the screen for instructions. Um, I want to take a, a moment first to acknowledge that we are here in the planning board room. I'm here accompanied by our planning director, Ms. Sheckley, our technical hearing writer, Ms. Kratka, our senior planner, uh, technician over here working with all the PowerPoints, um, Kenny Flanagan, excuse me, Kenneth Flanagan, and our, our IT tech whiz over there, Ryan Cron, our, vis our visual media specialist. Um, and so, and then we have James Hunt, are you on the line? Yes, there he is, our Chief of Development Review. And then we are accompanied by our Principal Counsel, David Warner. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge that we have everyone, we're good, we're, stay, we're doing our best to stay safe in this virtual environment. And we, a couple more things, we did not have a meeting when, on February 18th because it was a snow day. So we, we have a long agenda for today, we are compressing we are combining um, two actual planning board agendas. Um, and so we always start with a moment of silence for those who have passed. And since we didn't have meetings for a little bit, that, that list is unfortunately pretty big. So I want to acknowledge those that we've lost um, in the last um, couple of weeks. So within Prince George's County, we want to remember the Honorable Frank Frankois, who was an attorney and engineer he was a Prince George's County Council member and chief judge of the Orphans Court. He, he represented Prince George's County on the WMATA Board of Directors and the Washington Metropolitan Council of Governments. Um, June White Dillard, Esquire, longtime friend and colleague, former president of the Prince George's County of the NAACP, Prince George's County chapter of the NAACP, and she was a regular, staunch, steadfast participant at our annual um, Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission budget hearings. Um, Alvin Coley, um, the regional property manager for the Prince George's County Housing Authority. And I don't think I said this before, but the, the wonderful, inimitable Casterlet. So Casterlet was also a champion for Hillcrest Heights um, would uh, be at every single public hearing for our budget advocating for her community and we want to remember her as well. Also within Maryland, we want to remember Earl Griffin who was from um, Prince George's County. He was a former um, county resident and business owner and the founder of Earl's Super Liquor Store in Oxon Hill. Um, and he was president of the Prince George's County Democratic Party and, and wielded tremendous political influence. Arnie Sorison, Sorensen, um, who was the CEO of Marriott. He was the third CEO in Marriott's history and um, the first outside of its founding family. Uh, we want to remember the ever growing number of people who have succumbed to COVID-19. We have nearly over 29 million cases in the country and over 526,000 deaths in the United States alone. There will be a ceremony um, honor to, to remember, a memorial ceremony to remember um, the persons who have passed on from COVID in Prince George's County tomorrow at National Harbor. Um, we want to remember also Mercia Bowser, um, uh, the sister of Mayor Muriel Bowser, who also passed away from COVID. We want to remember the, vi the victims of the severe winter weather conditions across the United States. Over 80 um, deaths thus far attributed to fire, carbon monoxide poisoning, crashes, a tornado, and weather-related causes, and millions in the state of Texas without power or running water. The incomparable Vernon Jones, age 85, attorney and civil rights activist who worked with the NAACP, served as the former executive director of United Negro College Fund and president of the National Urban League, 
um, and so much more. An author, an advisor to presidents, um, worked with Presidents Ronald Reagan, um, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, um, President Bill Clinton, and President Barack Obama. S. S. Presley Blake, and plus he was an author, and his book, Vernon Can Read, is very inspiring. S. Presley Blake, age 106, who was the co-founder of Friendly's Ice Cream Change, Chain. Um, he, in 1935, during the Great Depression, he and his brother opened the ice cream parlor in Springfield, Massachusetts, with a $547 loan from his parents. Uh, by 1974, they had over 500 locations throughout New England and the Mid-Atlantic. Braden Smith, only age 24, he was the recent five-time winner on the game show Jeopardy. He was known to fans as Alex's Alex Trebek's last great champion by appearing in some of um, Alex's final episodes. He passed away from complications following surgery. James Burke, age 70. You may not know who the Burke family was, but they were also known as the, the musical group, The Five Stair Steps. They were a Chicago soul group um, formed in the mid 60s with four brothers and one sister. Their biggest hit was Ooh Child, beautiful record. Lynn Stallmaster, age 93, Academy Award-winning casting director who casted shows like Three's Company, Hogan's Heroes, and, Dun and Gunsmoke, and jumpstart the careers of Dustin Hoffman, Chris Christopher Reeve, and John Travolta. Melvin Banks, founder of Urban Ministries. Irv Cross, former defensive back with the um, National Football League Philadelphia Eagles, the first black sports ana analyst to work full-time on national TV. Neville Livingston Bunny Whaler, founding member of the Whalers, the, um, along with Bob Marley. Sheila Washington, founder of the um, Civil Rights Museum, dedicated to the memory of the Scottsboro Boys who were unjustly convicted of crimes in the 1930s. Um, compelled after reading a book found in her parents' bedroom, decades later, she became a catalyst for the posthumous pardons and full exonerations. Bill Wright, first black golfer to win a United States Golf Association event in 1959. Uh, Brenda Banks, first black woman to work as an animator. Uh, movie credits include Wizards, Smurfs, Simpsons, and King of the Hill. Uh, Mark Anthony Morales, known as Prince Marky D, rapper, um, songwriter and producer with the rap group Fat Boys. Vincent Jackson, NFL wide receiver who played for San Diego Chargers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, Louis Nix III, only age 29, former defensive lineman with Notre Dame and the NFL Jacksonville Jaguars. Rush Limbaugh, political commentator and radio talk show host of the Rush Limbaugh show. Um, Arturo de Modica, Modica, I think it is, um, the sculptor known for the charging bull, the iconic uh, sculpture, which he secretly placed on Wall Street outside the New York Stock Exchange in 1989. Um, and, and, then, and then there were so many, so many more. Catherine Cat Craig, the um, NBC News reporter for Today in New York. Andy Hoffman, um, the father of the uh, um, University of Nebraska superfan and brain cancer patient, Jack Hoffman, spent the last decade raising funds for Team Jack Foundation to end pediatric brain cancer. And I know there are many more. Susan By, first former lady of Indiana. I'm not first, but the former lady of Indiana. And of course, we extend our deepest sympathy to any of you who may have suffered the loss of a loved one. Um, tough times, we know. So if we may have that moment of silence, please. Thank you. So it is the month of March. It is Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. It is Correctal Cancer Awareness Month, Colorectal Cancer, Cancer Awareness Month, National Ethics Awareness Month, National Multiple Sclerosis Education and Awareness Month, National Nutrition Month. And I have to tell you, the uh, Department of Parks and Recreation is having nutritional programs all month long for the month of March. And you can go to their website and see and get some good recipes and some good cooking lessons. Um, uh, of course, it is Irish American Heritage Month and we get to celebrate and we will be celebrating again in a couple weeks. Um, and finally, it is Women's History Month, and we honor and celebrate all the women in our lives, all the women on this wonderful planning board. We are in the majority on this planning board. 
all the women of the commission and uh, we just celebrate women universally. And March 8th is International Women's Day. So make sure you wear your purple on March 8th and you celebrate women. It is March 4th and March 4th used to be inaugural day. There were at least 20 US presidential inaugurations on this day, won't name them all. 19, I mean, 1791, Vermont was admitted as the 14th state on March 4th. March 4th, 1933, I point this out because it is Women's History Month. Frances Perkins was sworn in as the United States Secretary of Labor, the first woman in this position and the first woman in the US cabinet. She served under Presidents Franklin Roosevelt and Harry Truman. And for the music lovers on this day, March 4th, 1967, the Rolling Stones Ruby Tuesday went number one. So with that, I'm going to say um, that the, we have um, announcements. We have the Department of Parks and Recreation Guide. It is now online. Um, it's wonderful. It tells you about all the programs that we're offering. We're not, we're leaving no stone unturned, even in this virtual environment. So please peruse the, the uh, event. And finally, we got birthdays in the house, birthdays in the house. First of all, our senior council, we want to give it up to Peter Goldsmith. He, we didn't have a planning board at the time of his birthday. So we want to celebrate Peter. Can we all say happy birthday to Peter? And we hope you're watching. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Peter. Peter. Okay. So we celebrate you and we, you know, Peter is our newest addition. Um, we, he hasn't been here, I don't think a full year yet. And um, so we didn't have a whole lot of pictures of him um, pre, pre um, quarantine. So, but we, we got him on screen. So there we go. Um, and then finally, speaking of birthdays, we got a leap year baby. Happy wow. birthday to Commissioner Shawnee's Washington. Look at that. And look at that beautiful professional picture of her. She looks awesome. And then, but she got a whole nother side. There we go. Happy birthday, Commissioner Washington. And let and let the record reflect that we got your chocolate right smack in the middle there for you because this woman is a chocoholic, plain and simple and a very good sport. She is our quintessential motion maker. So happy birthday to Commissioner Washington. Can we all join in? Happy birthday, Commissioner Washington. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so congratulations to both of you. And you know, we know there are other people who have birthdays during this time. You know, we celebrate everyone's birthday. And, we, and though we may not know, for any of you who have birthdays or had birthdays in February and in this upcoming March, we extend our birthday greetings to you too, because we need to celebrate. We need good, positive things to celebrate in these very troubled times. So again, we thank and appreciate everyone for your flexibility, cooperation, and support as we continue to keep our planning operations moving forward in a safe fashion in our absolutely no longer new normal. We remain thankful for our blessings and ask that you make every effort to be kind, to stay safe, to look out for one another, to stay strong, to stay resilient, and remain ever hopeful as we strive to get through these continued challenging times together. Thank you. So with that, I'm going to go to our consent agenda. Is there anyone here to oppose the staff's recommendations on items 4B or 4D? And I do, I think I do have some people signed up here. Um, um, no, we don't, that's the next one. Okay. so. Um, is there anyone here to oppose the staff's recommendations on items 4B or 4D or any board member who wishes to discuss? If not, is there a motion? Madam Chair, for consideration of the records for items 4B and 4D, I move adoption of staff findings and approval of items on the consent agenda in accordance with the recommendation of staff. Second. We have a motion and a second. Motion by Commissioner, uh, Vice Chair Bailey and seconded by Commissioner Washington. Vice Chair Bailey. But I. Aye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Dorner. Vote aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Vote aye. Yes. Um, and I didn't know if I said this earlier, but we do have all, the full complement of our planning board. Um, I would announce that the plan, the planning um, um, PMAC um, has been scheduled to um, to, um, 1 p.m. is rescheduled from the morning session to the afternoon session. 
and the men's shelter application, which is item seven, has been withdrawn. It's not just withdrawn from the agenda, the entire application has been withdrawn. Next, we have item nine. Um, and item nine are the reservations. Mr. Maythot, there are four reservations expiring on June 30th. Yes, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, Tom Maysog, for the record, uh, I'd like to introduce to you Judith Howerton, who will present the uh, the reservations. Wonderful. Ms. Howerton, good to see you. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, wow. Madam Chair. <laughs> uh, members of the planning board, for the record, my name is Judith Howerton with the Transportation Planning Section. Um, we have four reservations that will expire on June 30, 2021. Section 24, 141 of the Prince George's County Code provides that a reservation may be continued for additional periods of time and that prior to the expiration date, the planning board shall determine whether the reservation should be renewed. It is also required that consent from the property owners be obtained prior to any continuation beyond the first three years. Finally, it is required that an opportunity be provided for the county executive and the county council to comment on the renewals. Um, this ends my um, presentation. Ms. Howerton, this is your first time presenting it to us. Um, I, I've been okay. to applying board several times and spoken before, but okay, maybe so it's okay. presentation. Okay, yeah. good speak. I was trying to remember, I'm sorry, okay. Okay, because you yeah. said, uh, Mr. Mace, I said introduce. I wasn't, um, but there it does have more than one meeting. Okay, thank you, Ms. Howerton. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay, does the board does the board have any questions? I see no hands raised or anything. Uh, is there a motion? Move approval, Madam Chair. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Washington, seconded by Vice Chair Bailey. Uh, Mr. Mace, would you, were you trying to say something? Can we turn him on? You're, you're, you're muted, Mr. Maysock. Hold on a second. Yes, uh, nothing more, Madam Chair. Thank you. Oh, you, you put your hand up. I thought you were uh, trying to say something. Okay, so we have a motion in a second. Um, Vice Chair Bailey? Vote aye. Commissioner Washington? Vote aye. Commissioner Dorner? Vote aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. The ayes have it 5-0. Next, we have item six, which is the mandatory referral 2007F Marlboro Hall renovation and addition. Mr. Kowalik, are you on? Yes, I am, Madam Day Chair. Are. Wonderful. You're on. Great. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. For the record, Ted Kowalik with the special project section and countywide planning here today to seek your approval to transmit staff's recommendations for the Marlboro Hall renovation and addition mandatory referral 2007F. Next slide, please. Uh, general location map, the project is located in Council District 6, Planning Area 73 on the campus of Prince George's Community College. Next slide, please. Here's an aerial view of the campus and Marlboro Hall is outlined in purple, approximately in the center of the aerial. Next slide, please. This project site vicinity map, uh, the campus is located uh, uh, southeast, southwest of Largo Road, uh, south of Campus Way and east of Harry S. Truman Drive. Next slide, please. There's a natural features map of the site. You can see that uh, the large portion of the site is developed with some woodland and steep uh, slopes at the southern end of the site. Next slide, please. Uh, the existing zoning is RR and the campus composes approximately 150 acres. Next slide, please. Uh, the right-of-way map shows Largo Road as an expressway, campus way, and Harry S. Truman as arterials. None of the improvements proposed will be in 
uh, any of the right ways. Next slide, please. Here's a site plan of the addition um, to about southeast of Marlboro Hall, the existing building. Next slide, please. Here are some addition elevations, giving you an idea of what the new addition will look like uh, from the south. Next slide, please. Uh, the applicant seeking to construct a four-story, 89,000 square foot addition. Um, a new addition will contain general academic places such as classrooms, computer labs, academic offices, lecture rooms, and an art, art program. Uh, the demolition on the site commenced in June 2020 under mandatory referral 2007F. Uh, it just dealt with the site work and a recommendation from that has been included in this mandatory referral, and that was for bike racks. Um, the project is expected to be completed in March of 2023. Next slide, please. Uh, staff supports the development content set for the proposed Marlboro Hall renovation in addition. Uh, the only recommendations that staff had was consider incorporating interpretive signage and plant identification tags for the biotension regardants that are going to be uh, included in the plan and consider creating a complete signage plan for the development for building identification and wayfinding by utilizing the sign design standards of the college. And that concludes staff report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kowalik. Are there any questions, Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Commissioner Washington? No questions. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Daughter? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? No questions. Is there a motion? Move Madam Chair. Oh. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm, I move that we accept the recommendations of staff and approve transmittal of MR-2007F to Mr. Donald Pruitt uh, with the Facilities Management Building. Um, okay. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move that we accept the recommendations of staff and approve transmittal of MR-2007F to Mr. Donald Pruitt Vote aye. Commissioner Washington. <laughs> Vote aye. Commissioner Dorner. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Aye. The ayes have it five zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the next item on our agenda is um, item five, which is the detailed site plan 16004 for Oakland. Um, let's see if we have everyone. Mr. Hulbutt, there you are. We see you present. Um, um, Ms. Barbara Jo Camp. I saw you. Okay. Ms. Camp. I'm here. Okay. Thank you. You're, you're, you're um, okay. Just audio, okay. Um, okay, and and then we have a citizen exhibit. We have um, Mr. Um, an aerial photo submitted by Mr. Ayala. Ayala, I think someone correct can correct me. Um, and and that's it. And that's um, exhibit number one, I guess. Um, Mr. Hellbutt, you're on. Is he muted? Mr. Hellbutt, you're you're muted. You're muted, Mr. Hellbutt. Thank you. Good morning, there Madam. We go. And members of the board for the record. I'm Jeremy Hurlbut with the uh, representing the urban design section today. Uh, the project before you is item five for detailed site plan DSP 16004, Oaklawn. As mentioned, uh, a neighbor has provided um, an aerial exhibit um, and the applicant proposes three single family detached units and staff is recommending approval of this DSP with conditions. Next slide. 
The site is located in Southern Prince George's County in planning area 76B in Council District 8. Next slide. More specifically, the subject property is on the east side of Allentown Road, approximately 400 feet south of the intersection of Allentown Road and Tucker Road. Next slide. The subject property is in the rural residential zone or RR zone. Next slide. The aerial photo shows the 1.61 acre property, which is surrounded by single family detached dwelling units in the rural residential zone as well. Next slide. The site is flat and wooded and slopes to the southeast corner of the site. Next slide. The property has frontage on master plan collector Allentown Road shown here in green. Next slide. The bird's eye view shows the existing house on the property uh, that is to be raised and those that abut. Next slide. The applicant has submitted this DSP to construct three new single family detached dwellings on proposed lots 399, 400, and 401. The existing single family detached dwelling unit located on lot 399 is proposed to be raised. Lot 400 and 401 were designed as flag lots on the eastern portion of the property behind lot 399. The preliminary plan of subdivision 4-06055 was accepted on October 17th, 2006, which approved two 25 foot wide stem uh, pipe stem lots or flag lots in the southeast corner of the property. Uh, each of these stems will have a 10 foot wide asphalt paved driveway from Allentown Road and the houses on lots 400 and 401 will be angled to face the southwest corner of the property. Council Bill 4-2006 flag states that flag lots may be permitted for preliminary plans accepted prior to November 1st, 2006 in accordance with subtitle 24 of the zoning ordinance. Next slide. The proposed house on lot 399 will be located in the general location of the existing house that is to be raised and will have a 15 foot wide driveway in the northwest corner of the property that will provide vehicular access from Allentown Road. A stormwater pipe is shown extending across the southern portion of the properties. And in this slide, um, it is an older iteration, but it will extend across two, the two neighboring properties to the south as shown in the previous slide. If you can go back to the previous slide. And you can see the further extension of the stormwater pipe that has happened. Next slide. The landscape, go back to the landscape slide, I'm sorry. The proposed project is su subject to sections 4.1 residential requirement in section 4.6 buffering development from special roadways, as well as the section 4.9 sustainable landscape requirement of the 2010 Prince George's County Landscape Manual. Staff has found that this DSP provides the required plantings and is in conformance with the requirements. Next slide. The 1.61 acre site contains about 0.55 acres of woodlands um, and will be required to provide 0 0.81 acres of woodland requirement via uh, fee and lieu. Next slide. All three houses are to use a common architectural model that will have three uh, square footage of 3,297 square feet and will be approximately 34 feet in height. The front stoop and garage will be highlighted with gable roofs uh, on the front elevation above the, those entry points. And the two car garage will have windows in the door and metal and mason, uh, metal masonry roof above the garage door. Most of the front facade will be brick with a vertical column of 
that will separate the main entrance and the garage portion of this elevation. Next slide. The rear facade shows a, a brick water table is provided on all four sides of the house and hardy plank siding and uh, windows on all elevations. Next slide. The side elevations show that further architectural details, including keystones over the windows, columns uh, at the front porch and different brick course that will add details to the facades. Next slide. The urban designs staff recommends the planning board adopt the findings of this report and approve detailed site plan DSP 16004 and treat Type 2 Tree Conservation Plan TCP2-04020 for Oaklawn. This is staff's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Halbert. Um, Let's see if there's any questions of you at this time. Um, Madam Vice Chair. You're muted. No questions at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Washington. No question. Commissioner Dorner. No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Geraldo. No questions, Madam Chair. Um, thank you. And I was, re before I go to Ms. Camp, I was remiss in not um, noting that we did have another speaker signed up. Uh, we, I, I noted his exhibit, but I didn't mention his name. And I want to make sure that um, uh, Daniel um, Ayala, and I'm probably messing it up. Are you on? I see that you've signed in, but I, I just want to make sure you can hear us and we can hear you. We see your name. I just want to make sure. Excuse me. Can Mr. D Mr. Ayala, can you unmute yourself? You're unmuted from our end, but you have to do it from your side too. Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Um, so okay, I just, good. Okay, I'm I have a few things. You. Okay, no, no, I'm not calling on you yet. I just wanted to make sure that you were on. And oh, okay, then, yeah, I'm on. Okay, but I do want to ask you how you pronounce your name so I don't mess it up. Ayala. Ayala, it's, okay, so that's like what I said. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank uh -huh. you. Um, so you will get a chance to speak after Ms. Camp, okay? Okay. Thank you. Ms. Camp? Uh -huh. uh, good morning for the record. Marva Jo Camp representing the applicant. Uh, one, I want to say before I make my few comments, because I know you have a heavy agenda, that we are in complete agreement with staff's report and all uh, conditions there too. I also wanted to just add a little flavor. This project has been going on since 2007. It was originally approved by this planning board and then called up by the district council as it related to a stormwater management plan. It may show in your documents that this area has a significant draining problem, drainage problem that has long affected the residents in this area. The proposed application is the first and only um, a, attempt and ability with their approved stormwater management plan to address the stormwater management drainage problem. So, and the other thing that I wanted to mention is that this applicant has worked very extensively uh, with the neighbors around them, including having a community meeting. And also because of the stormwater management approval, having to get an easement from one of their neighbors. So this has really been a collective effort on the part of uh, this community or those affected. And once this stormwater management plan goes into effect, it will not only benefit this applicant, but it will also benefit others around this applicant. I wanted to finally say uh, a special thank you. As I said, it started in 2007. This predates me, predates me even doing zoning. Uh, but I wanted to give a special thank you to Mr. Hurlbut 
and to your council uh, because they worked very diligently uh, to bring this home and to work with the applicant myself. And I just wanted to say thank you to them for their efforts and, and their very thoughtful approach to the conditions. And with that, I will open myself up to any questions. Okay, thank you, Ms. Camp. Let's see if there are any questions of you at this time. Uh, Madam Vice Chair. No questions of Ms. Camp. Commissioner Washington. No questions for Mrs. Camp. Okay, um, Commissioner Dorner. No questions, thank you. Commissioner Geraldo. No questions at this time. Okay, so we have another speaker, and Ms. Camp, you'll have the opportunity to wrap up. Mr. Ayala. Yes, Ryan, is it my time to speak? It certainly is. Okay, uh, there is a terrible drainage problem all over those three proposed houses that are going to be built because the grading level is, uh, is at least 15 feet from one end to another. And that <coughs> offers a large draining program. For example, there are nine houses behind me who drain their all of their drainage water through my property. And it goes to the property in front of me, 8310 <coughs> Allentown Road, in which there is an easement that has been in violation for at least 12 years already. I've been to court once and my lawyer went cuckoo during the session and the judge gave the permission for 8312 to go ahead and do what they wanted on the property without awareness of the easement at all. So he blocks up all the water through these nine properties. Okay. <clears throat> and all the water is in my backyard because okay. of the easement. Now, okay. <clears throat> the oh. three houses uh, that are in mind to be built. There is a huge amount of drainage water that goes through those properties. Now, all of the <laughs> houses in next to Allentown Road um, have drainage problems, problems inside of their basements. They get water all the time. 8316 got a new basement because of the water damage. 8314, which is next to me, has water problems inside of the house forever. I've been here for 27 years. 27 years have been a water problem inside of that house. It's been abandoned by the what? owner. <clears throat> for several years because of the water problem. Okay. There's Mr. incredible Ayala, water drainage on those three properties. Now, Mr. Ayala, below I have a the question. three properties, Mr. Ayala, there is a city drainage. And <clears throat> the Ayala, law I have a question says, for you. I have hello. a question for you. Can you hear me? I have a question for you. Um, Go ahead. I, my question is, first of all, I'd like to know if you have a copy of the staff report that it was posted online. It's posted a couple weeks in advance. Do you have, do you by any chance have that? I don't think I do. It's not essential, but um, I will take this opportunity to let you know should something else happen in your neighborhood, should you see other uh, development or proposals in your neighborhood, you can always go to our website and download the, the whole staff report that will provide a tremendous bit of analysis. And one of the things in the staff report, and I'm gonna ask Ms. Camp to address it on behalf of her client, but um, by law, um, this applicant for this, for this particular um, development, for these three single family detached units um, cannot be responsible for the other drainage problems in the neighborhood. I'm sorry, I'm very, very sorry that you're having those problems and maybe we can talk with um, the Department of Permitting um, Inspections and Enforcement about what's happening over there. We would be happy to do that. But this particular 
landowner and a property cannot be responsible for, for pre-existing conditions everywhere. However, I will say your concern is you don't want this exacerbated and, and we fully appreciate that. But we, I will tell you in the staff report, it acknowledges that this applicant has, um, has to submit what's called a stormwater management concept plan. And they have in fact um, su um, submitted that. And it was, and they submit it to that same department. It's the County Department of Permitting Inspections and Enforcement, otherwise known as DPI. And they did get approval of their conceptual stormwater management plan in October of 2020, just a few months ago. And, 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 and Ms. Camp can talk to about it and what they're doing to address um, stormwater management issues over there on, on the site of those, these three homes. I just want to make sure that you know that because if you don't have the staff report, you might not be able to see that. Okay. Yeah, let me, let me make an addition if, if I could. Sure. And you that can. is uh, the property on 8316. Can you uh, show Allentown Road. Hold on a second. Hold, can you guide us there, um, um, Mr. Flanagan? Is there is that the best? Or, or Mr. Hurlbut, is that the best? Um, slide for the hold on a second we want to follow you mr ayala while you're speaking we want to we right. when you're talking about specific properties we want to follow you and see exactly where they are okay, okay. Mr. Hulbert, can you guide mr flanagan or can you do can you uh, or you use your screen yes 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 i want to see if, if if we could point out mr ayala's property as well okay it's that's fine to the north okay. of the subject property it's the flag that, you know, you come down just north, one north. One That's north? It's north. Come south, please. Well, you know, I mean, you're saying north one, and south. One property north of the subject property, which is outlined in red. That and one? It's a flag. Pro it's a flag lot. So it's a it, Mr. Halbutt, can you see where he, you can see where he is, or can you find right a there. better? Okay. Right there. Okay. Okay. The flag lot. Okay. So, and that is the property that he's referring to right now. That's is that it, Mr. Ayala? Can you see? I'm I'm trying to. Is is that a, a house? Is that a house? There's a house there. See, there's a structure there, at least. Yeah. Mr. Hellbutt, is that the best slide in the PowerPoint? I believe so. Okay, you know what I have. There's one other a bird's eye may give a closer view, but I believe Mr. Ayala is talking about. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay. Yeah, that's so that, better. Yeah, okay. That's better. And so that's the house that you're talking about now, right? And then can you guide Mr. Flanagan here, who's working that cursor, can you guide him to where your house is? Can I, can I guide him? Can you tell him where to move the cursor? <clears throat> oh, um, move the cursor down to the right there, right there. Okay, so that's yours? Oh, no, you had it a few minutes ago. Or further down. To the red line, next to the red line. Next to that, that one right there? That one right there. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Uh, the next one up, up, the next red line. Uh, oh, the okay. other side, the other the side. The other side of the red line, okay. Yeah. Move, uh, move uh, it uh, right there, right there. Hold it. Put it on the red line. Okay, that's the man's property that you see the house in front. Yeah, I saw he, that, but we also asked where your property is. This is that's where my, next to where my property is, yeah. But the red line there <clears throat> and down just a little bit, right there. Yeah, right there in front of that building there. That's your there. property? No, that's the... Uh, the man next to Allentown Road, uh, that's where he okay. lives. Anyway, he's got no, the no, water. No, 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 no Mr. Ayala. There are more me, of asking where you live. Let, let me leave the arrow right there. What I want to say is that he has 
his property blocked off completely so where all of the water from the upper level properties drain on his property through his property to the city's sewage drain, which is down on the other side of, of the church. Now, he's got that all blocked up, which uh, makes the development above that uh, blockage all flooded. All of the houses there are flooded because of 8316 Allentown Road. He's got it blocked. Now, there is a law that says that you cannot uh, aggravate the original passage of water drainage from one property to another. It's against the law, but this guy's blocked it up okay. so that there is no drainage and the properties in front, which will be this man's three houses, will have enormous amount of water drainage on his property because this guy has got it blocked up and there isn't free passage to the city drainage. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Thank you for that. Are you here representing yourself? Yes. Okay, so where is your property? That's the question we keep asking and we haven't gotten an answer to that yet. I, I thought he pointed it out. It's uh. I wish I could move the arrow myself. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. you talked about someone Hoban. else's property. Mr. Hoban, please step in. The, the flag lot we pointed out originally to the north uh -huh. of the property is Mr. Ayala's property. Okay. So we, we I thought he was saying that was someone else's right there. property. Okay. Right. That's your property. Got it. Okay. Now we're clear. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. it. <clears throat> okay. All so, right. Uh, the water is all blocked up on my property and in tremendous uh, raining storms, the water goes just like a, as an ocean right through the property that he intends to okay. build on. It's incredibly okay. high. Mr. Ayala, I need to ask. Um, we're trying to follow you, and, and we're and we're and we're there now. But I I need to, so the uh, the property in question for the um, that Miss Camp uh, Miss Camp's um, client is is the property in question is is outlined in red, correct, Miss Camp? Yes. So and so yeah, I, so I think a little bit and, of yeah, and if that is yeah. So so if there if there is a problem, as Mr. Ayala is saying. You, pursuant to your stormwater management plan, will be addressing some of that. And I would like to, Ms. Camp, Ms. Camp can you um, address what you will be doing so that Mr. Ayala can hear that? Yes, yes. And so I want to reiterate what I had said previously. This drainage problem has been uh, a problem for this community for, for at least two to three decades. And the uh, Mr. Ayala is actually upstream to the applicant and what has right. happened and the one most affected is the property that he referenced Hello. the Boyette property that gets all of the, all of the water um right. that, that occurs because of drainage issues okay. it is the it is that that family who gave the easement in order to facilitate the stormwater management concept so what will happen through the stormwater management that will be implemented is it will start to drain that that um, that water. And as a result of being able to drain, you won't start to see the backup that keeps going up, 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 including to Mr. Ayala's property. So it will not only benefit the applicant, but it will benefit the, uh, the Boyettes who are uh, who are given oh. the easement and Mr. Ayala because what's happening is the water is backing up and going to other properties. It is the only uh, resolution or solution that has been offered to help this community. So in fact, the building of these three along with the stormwater management plan is going to end up helping the entire community, not just the applicant. 
<coughs> okay. Well, um, well, the problem is, is that there are 11 houses behind me whose drainage water goes through my property and down to two other properties below me. There's a, the, the, the water below descends, you, below you descends below, very rapidly. Below you towards the street or below you through this property in question? Through this property in question. Okay. But with the stormwater management um, uh, improvements that they are making there, that will help. I can't. I can't say that that will address every drainage problem throughout, but it will. It will address, as Ms. Camp indicated, um, the property below that you reference and your own property. And I and. You have disagreeable property owners in the neighbor who will not allow drain water to go through their property from where he's going to develop. It's an enormous amount of water that will go through that, that 8316 property and he blocks it up. He's got it blocked up. And I've had, I've had a commissioner go over there and he gave way to that guy to block it up. He said, there's no law. There is a law in the books that says you cannot block anything to the the main sewage area. Okay, let me ask this question. Let me ask this question. Um, Mr. Ayala, um, when an application is filed, you see the signs posted, clearly you saw something or you received a letter or somehow you had noticed to sign up on this hearing. And we thank you for doing that because we want to hear from citizens. But I, what I don't know is if you saw the sign, there's contact information, or if you got a letter as an adjoining property owner, there's contact information on the letter. And I didn't, I don't know if you ever had the opportunity to have to sit down to reach out to the applicant for a conversation on this. Um, <coughs> Uh, he held a few meetings, okay. and I attended those meetings and explained my feelings to him. And, and I okay. did want to add, um, Madam Chair, we not only had the signs, but the applicant um, reached out by phone, uh, okay. by in person, and left a note um, trying to have any conversations. They did that with every neighbor, which is what we had to do in order to get the easement, for example. But I think that this applicant did above and beyond what would have been required because of their great concern for their neighbors, including Mr. Ayala. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. So, so uh, Mr. Ayala, here's my question. So th they have an approved stormwater management um, plan from from the County Department of Permitting Inspections and Enforcement. That plan will help the, um, the, 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 the drainage situation there. I can't say it will fix everything. I can, we can't make those kind of promises. And, um, and, and that is not in our belly, but that's in the Department of, you know, DPI's department. But so I'm trying to find out, are you coming before us because you're frustrated about the drainage problem in general, which may be. In general, you, that's right. In are, general. And are you all, okay, okay, that's part one. And I, and I can see that and I can, and we can understand why. The second part is, are you opposed to this particular application, which should improve the situation a little bit? Uh, the way it, it, the way that it's designed at the moment, I'm, it, it, it's a poor design. Uh, what my suggestion is, is to build the homes that the, well, you would have to eliminate one home. You could only build two homes on right now on Allentown Road. There's an old, they own this old house there. They could tear that down and put another house up right next to it. Two houses only because everything else is tremendous water flow. There isn't that much 
water flow in the two houses next to Allentown Road. You're going to have okay. big drainage problems. Anything below the houses on Allentown Road, huge, huge amount of water that drains through there. Okay. <clears throat> so is that it? Okay. So, yeah, that's my suggestion. Build two houses right on Allentown Road <clears throat> and forget the third house. Okay. Because the right. way it is right now, you're building houses down there right in the main drainage avenue. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Mr. Ayala. Um, All right. Uh, we appreciate your testament. And whatever happens here today, I am going to ask Ms. Camp to reach out to you also to make sure, ensure that he has the staff report and, and also a copy of the approved stormwater management co um, plan, concept plan. Okay, Ms. Camp? Yes, yes Madam Chair. Okay. Anyway, um, we, that, we went through this before and, and it was not improved before. What well, was it, 10 want, years ago? That we went through the same thing, and that was the the plan was rejected. I wanted to then, maybe correct that a little bit. It was approved by the planning board. It was uh, called up by the district council, and I think, and that's why it's been going on for such a long time. But I will say, because the stormwater management issue was such a major issue that Mr. Ayala uh, referenced today, extra attention with. Um, with the county has been uh, taken to ensure that we had a stellar stormwater management concept concept plan and extra effort had been made with all of the neighbors. Again, Mr. Ayala is upstream. The people most affected are downstream and wanted to make sure that nothing in these three lots would have any effect on the neighbors and in fact, improve the drainage issues that they had. And so we are very happy that we have the extra time on the stormwater management concept plan. Okay. I'm not up. I'm not upstream. I'm right in the middle of it. There are 11 houses around me, okay. above me, that go through my property and will descend on his property. Okay, Mr. Ayala. Let me just say this because we have we have lots of other cases too. So everyone gets their opportunity to speak, but we're not gonna. We can't go back and forth and back and forth. So I, I'm. I'm, I'm I was under the impression well, you, I, you, you were incorrect. That's why I had to correct you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, sh all right, fine. But okay. So we're, um, you had concluded your testimony and in accordance with our rules of procedure, um, the, the applicant goes last with their summation, but I don't know. I don't, I do not make motions. I do vote, but I do not make motions and I don't know where this is going to go. But in the, in the event that it, it is approved, um, I, I have elicited a commitment from Ms. Camp on behalf of her client, the applicant, to continue to work with you, to continue to provide the information, the staff report, and actually Mr. Hurlbut can do help too. But Ms. Camp, you have to get that stormwater management um, um, concept approval to him as well. And, and, and okay? Yes, yes. You the applicant okay. is listening and they know the commitment that I'm making and are in agreement. Okay, thank you. Mr. Camp, do you have anything else to add in summation? Only thank you for the opportunity to improve the property through the development of these three, the drainage problem through the development of these three homes. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I had a question for Mr. Ayala. What I'm trying to get to is, is I was getting ready to ask that because I, I go in sequence. So I was going to ask the board if they have any questions of anyone, starting with a Madam Vice Chair. No questions, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Washington. No questions, thank you. Commissioner Dorner. No questions. Okay, now Commissioner Geraldo, you're on. Okay. Mr. Ayala, I have one question for you. What do you mean that the person south of the red line is blocking the water? Say that again, please. What do you mean when you say the house that is south of the red box is blocking the water? You said that the person blocked something. Oh yeah, there, there, he, there is an e, um, 
easement in question who blocks the water uh, because because the water is supposed to drain through his property, which is 8310 Allentown Road. And the water drainage goes through his property legally through an easement. But he's got it all blocked up. And the water remains at my house because he's got all the property, uh, his property blocked up. So where it goes on my uh, on my <clears throat> my territory, and it goes through the uh, territory in question. Also, it will go tremendously because he's got it all blocked up on eighty three ten. How and I've taken him. I've taken him to court on this, have... but I have taken him to court on this, <clears throat> and it went on for a year. And my lawyer, young lawyer, got all. He started to stutter because he got all tired up with a year after going through all this business together, and I lost the easement uh, priority. So I don't have an easement anymore. I got to take him back to court. So with this water thing on his property. Okay, I, my question to you, Mr. Isle, is I'm trying to figure out when you say that it's all blocked up, how did he block it up? Are you just saying his house? He is a construction, he, he is a construction worker. He brought tons of dirt and spread it on top of, of the whole easement area. Because and he did it three or four times because every time he put dirt on there, it started draining normally again because he didn't put enough. But now he has put enough. He put four or five different times he brought dirt in there to block that easement where it is is blocked right now. But I have to take him back to okay. court in order to get well, you might permission for the easement. That's creating, if that's creating the problem, you might want to call up DPI. Call who? Department of Permits Inspection. DPI, Department of Inspections Permits and Enforcement. If he's blocking, divide, designing his property in such a way or putting the extra, they may be interested in that because that can affect the stormwater management that's being put in with this project. How do I get in touch with them? We, we listen, Mr. Ayala, we can get that information to you. And, and Ms. Camp, we're going to add that to you. And Mr. Hell, but you can do the same. Okay. Because this is the agency I, I, I keep referencing. They approve the stormwater management concept plans. They are a Prince George's County agency. And not only do they approve stormwater management plans, but they are the people who cite you when there are any kind of violations. So, so hmm. that is what Commissioner Geraldo is suggesting. And we can get you that information. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll see. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so the, none of the board members have any other questions at this time. I'm going to entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve DSP-16004 and TCP2-040 dash 2019 along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Commissioner Washington's motion seconded by Madam Vice Chair. I don't know if there's any additional discussion except for the fact that Ms. Um, Camp in, in, um, has stated on the record that she will continue to work with um, Mr. Ayala and provide the information needed. And both Mr. Hurlbut and Mr. Camp, Ms. Camp will provide information on how to reach out to, to um, DPI to uh, um, notify them of any um, perceived violations. And Mr. Hunt, did you have something you wanted to add? You came on screen, so I... Oh, no, no, Madam Chair, I didn't, that was it. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, um, I'm gonna call for the vote. Was there any additional discussion? Okay, um, Madam Vice Chair. Vote aye. Commissioner Washington. I'll vote aye. Um, Commissioner Dorner. Aye. 
and Commissioner Geraldo. I vote aye. I want to thank uh, Ms. Camp and Mr. Holbert to follow up with the uh, with Mr. Ayala to see if in fact there's a problem there that can be re rectified through DPI. Thank you. Okay, the ayes have it five zero. Thank you so very much. Thank um, you, Commissioner. Okay. Okay, so the next item we have on our agenda is, is legislation. Um, I, I and um, I miss Miss Hightower. You may have to share your screen because. Um, I yeah. have the legislation, but um, I'm not sure everyone else is. Okay. Okay. Good, Ms. good, mo good morning, Madam Chair. Um, good morning. I, uh, the first bill I would like to speak about is CB 8 uh, 2021 proposed draft uh, 2. I hope all of the board members have it. They should have it in their <laughs> binders. Um, I just want to quickly say that the bill amends the commercial table of uses to permit townhouses in the commercial office zone under certain circumstances. Uh, townhouses are currently permitted in the zone subject to specific footnotes. Staff appreciates the revisions made uh, to this version of the bill. Uh, the new version appears to address all of the amendments and clarifications requested by planning department staff. Uh, during the review of CB8 2021 draft one. Uh, with that being said, staff recommends that the planning board vote to support CB8 2021 proposed draft two. Please. I'll move approval, Ms. Hightower. Excellent job as always. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by uh, Madam Vice Chair. Madam Vice Chair. But I. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. The ayes have it uh, 5 0. Um, Ms. Hightower, I, yes, you, don't have CB9, you don't have CB9 yet if that's where you're going. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, that, I'll wait that, then. Because I don't know agenda. if you want to discuss it, but okay, yes, ma'am. No. I'll wait. No. See you oh, later. I, I, I've already posted it for the 1, 1 p.m. agenda. Um, yes, Madam Chair. I do say, Ms., um, um, Mr. Gardner, our general counsel, are you on? We have, we do have um, an updated item on our legislative agenda. Mr. Gardner, I am, thank you. Ma I am, Madam Chairman. Good morning. Um, Good morning. If I'll proceed if you'd wish. Yep. For the record, Adrian Gardner, general counsel for the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. I'm joined today by um, uh, Mr. Harbaugh, who's going to, who is the um, Chief of Staff for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Um, if you'd allow me to um, share my screen. Yes. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm not sure if you uh, can see my screen. I actually. Well, sort of, kind of. Okay. I have the bill. Um, I'm not. I, it, okay, there it is. Okay. Yes. I, the 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 essence of the bill is that it changes. It um, uh, excuse me. The amendment is that it essentially substantially changes the bill. It's essentially a replacement. Under existing law, the county planning board is required to provide an adequate and balanced program of recreation that serves the needs and interests. The, 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 the bill would now add as part of that, that you would include appropriate, what you deem appropriate, what the planning board deems appropriate, non-traditional recreational opportunities. The non-traditional recreational opportunities have been, um, the definition of those are is very broad and the definition includes a number of examples that include lacrosse walls, pickleball, disc golf, some of the things that we are doing, some of which we're not. The point of it would be that this would be a part of the planning board's consideration in trying to construct the uh, balanced program. The final piece of the bill includes a special revenue fund. The special revenue fund comes along with a promise of the bill sponsor and several of the other delegates who thought it was a good idea, who proposed the bill and supported the bill, which would allow um, and, and a promise to seek state funding for the special revenue fund. Um, that is the essence of the bill. 
I'm recommending that you support the bill as amended. Um, I was um, surprised somewhat, but but um, there certainly was uh, quite a bit of uh, interest among members of the delegation, um, the by county committee to support to support the bill. Um, I don't think this will disrupt anything that we're currently doing. I think it's consistent with what we're doing, and for that reason, I would propose that you uh, support it. And I'll I'll hand off to Mr. Harbaugh. Well, is there anything else we need to know right now? I mean, the board may be ready for a motion, but Mr. Harbaugh, if you have something succinct to add, that would be, you know, that you feel compelled to add, we'll take it. Thank you, Madam Chair. And for the record, Sean Harbaugh, Chief of Staff of the Department of Parks and Recreation. Uh, as Adrian has said, this uh, allows for uh, an external funding source, special revenue fund to help propel us where we have uh, opportunities to pursue uh, non-traditional recreation. Uh, many of them are listed here. Uh, this would be in alignment with uh, the Catalyte Sports Program that's under development uh, and could provide opportunity for some seed money on uh, if that comes through. But I uh, think Adrian covered it very well. Okay. Thank you so very much. If the board has no questions, or maybe you do, if there are any questions, we'll entertain them. I have to go back to, I need to um, see the board. I need for you to not share your screen anymore. Uh, I don't, okay, there you okay, go. Thank you. Okay, does, does the board have any questions? If not, is there, um, Commissioner Dorner, do you have a question or no question? The cross wall seem kind of random in, in there. Like in the, I, I'm, I'm fine with the alternative uses, but I mean that that's just like something up temporarily in a field just to bounce the ball up against. Um, so as long as the bill doesn't require us to do any of these things, um, I, I think we are doing a few of them already and, and potentially may be doing others and that's fine. But if, if we get to talk with these legislators again later on, it would be good to have a, a little bit, a little bit more thought in terms of like what they're doing. So it's not just sort of like random activities that are being put into legislation that could potentially affect us down the road if they change May to Shawl or something like that. I'll be happy to pass that along. And on the lacrosse walls, Mr. Harbaugh can speak more to it. But one of the things that I took comfort in is that the department is actually focused and, and very interested in looking at um, lacrosse walls as, as one of the um, um, current sort of initiatives. Yeah, it seems like an easy thing to do, but it's just, it. it it's very different from like having a, a pump track or, or stuff that's more permanent in there. And, and to right. the extent that we actually offer other alternative ideas, um, that would be that would be nice. Because there might be other things for like STEM, where we would have um, maybe some not just remote controlled cars, but actual drone um, enclosures where, where kids could play around with those and learn how to do um, different things that would be leisurely in, in our park environments. But I'll, I'll stop there. Okay. Just to be clear, um, that is the answer to Commissioner Dorner's question that this list is illustrative, uh, but not mandated, and we can view, we can look at other items. I just want to be clear about that. Absolutely, and more so, the standard is appropriate that you would be determining. Well, that's wonderful. And so, with that, Madam Chair, I'd like to move approval uh, in support of this amendment. I second. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by Commissioner Dorner. Madam Vice Chair. Good aye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Dorner. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Aye. The ayes have it, 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Harbor. How about, I'll, I'll get it right one day. And and Mr. Gardner, thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you, Okay, and this concludes the planning board agenda from the scheduled February 18th meeting. We will take a break, we will adjourn for now, and then we will resume on um, at 1 p.m. for the uh, March 1st, uh, March 4th agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.